Hey, you've tuned in to the GP and Happy Show tonight. I have a great guest. She's an advocate on everything gluten-free celiac, and she's here. To, it's actually gluten-free gal, Chris Kirsten Berman, and she's and I are going to talk about um, restaurants and how we can prevent being glutened and um, cross-contaminated and all that good stuff. So we'll be talking to her in just a few minutes. Stay tuned. to the G Free and Happy Show that happens every Monday night at 7 p.m. Pacific, 10 p.m. Eastern. I'm your host, Kathy, and I have been gluten-free for four years and counting. And I am super happy that I am gluten-free, by the way. I don't know if I say that very often, but I'm here. I'm talking to Kirsten tonight. Um, and she is gluten-free gal online. She's a huge advocate. Uh, if you ever are going to a restaurant this summer you have to listen to this what this show tonight because you don't want to be glutened it could ruin your whole day your whole week it depends on how sick you get if you were gluten so stick around she's going to be telling us all so many great tips uh, for this summer getting away and going out and doing all the fun stuff with the family. But first, episode 30, woohoo, 30, uh, is brought to you by Ovali TV. Ovali TV hosts and produces live video events built to meet your objective. Visit Ovali TV to request a free 30 minute consultation today to find out more about going live with your brand. And then also, Yesenia, uh, you want to grab a Kavita at any time. And I'm going to give, it should be on the bottom here, uh, kavita.com slash organic. In fact, I have it right here in the back too. It's a coupon that you can print out, print out as many as you want. They're spectacular on a hot day too. I just had one today. Uh, my favorite is the coconut. Um, I've also tried the lemon, what is that one? I tried it, the lemon pepper cleanse. Very good too. Um, so let's get started with Kirsten, the gluten-free gal. Hello. How are Hi. you tonight? Thank you so much for being on. Well, thank you very much for having me. I appreciate it. It's good uh, to be able to spread the word, the celiac word. The celiac, you're such a huge advocate. And so let's talk about, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, well, I was uh, diagnosed at the end of 2010 after being sick for seven years and uh, being so extremely sick that I, I really couldn't work sometimes for months at a time um, and then I after going gluten-free for seven days which I actually stumbled upon a diet um, and didn't even realize that I was gluten-free until after the fact and it was like night and day I mean I went from not getting off the couch from three months to being able to ride 10 miles on my bicycle I mean it was it was literally like night and day and um, going, be, finally being diagnosed and going gluten free not only changed my life but it saved my life as well. Um, so yeah, it's a pretty amazing thing. Is it? And um, how come you know so much? Because I've talked to you um, on the phone too, and you're so informative and such an advocate. How do you know so much about what we're going to talk about tonight? Um, you, where are you sitting? Tell me a little bit about that. Uh, well, I actually manage two bars here in Los Angeles. Um, they're Italian restaurants, and I manage their two bars. And uh, originally, I'm from Chicago. I've been in and out of restaurants for uh, for a while now. Uh, front of the house, back of the house, bartending, managing. Uh, it's kind of been my life, I guess. Uh, and I'm at work right now. <laughs> 
welcome. <laughs> and thank you again for doing this because I think this is a huge subject we're going to talk about. Basically, we're talking about all the restaurants out there and how we need to be proactive. Um, see, I'm gluten free. If I have gluten free at a restaurant or gluten in a restaurant that's hidden or cross contaminated, my whole night is over. And my husband has seen it happen and we avoid that at all times. So it's very nice to talk to you before the vacation season starts kicking in and we're going to all these restaurants. So I'm going to ask you the first question here and uh, it's what is the uh, number one concern we should all have dining out when we are gluten free, celiac, uh, one that many people do not think about either? Uh, well, I think, you know, as a, as a celiac or gluten sensitive or uh, I think there's a there's a, a certain amount of stress that goes along with you going out to eat. You you know I know for myself personally I always get some knots in my stomach um, because you're basically rolling the dice and just hoping that whatever that you're eating is going to be okay that you're trusting the person that you're talking to that you're trusting the kitchen and there's a lot of people who are touching your food from between you ordering it and you actually getting it on the table. And I think especially when you're first starting out, you, when you don't realize um, what you can eat and what you can't eat and restaurants putting gluten-free on the menu and, and people just assuming that just because it says gluten-free that, that that's actually what it is. That, and, and celiac safe doesn't mean gluten-free. They're completely two different things, um, you know. Tell me a example, little bit about that. Well, for example, like Domino's Pizza, um, they came out with their gluten-free pizza, which is absolutely appalling, um, because the ingredients actually might be gluten-free, but it's not made in a gluten-free area whatsoever. And the absolute biggest, biggest concern that people should be aware of is cross-contamination. And um, it's the littlest thing that can get you sick. I mean, if somebody's, in, if somebody's in the kitchen and they take a knife and they use that knife to cut regular bread and then they use that same knife without wiping it off to cut your food, there's a good chance, depending on how, your, how extreme your, your sickness is, is then now you're going to get ill. And I think that's one of the big things is that people, people aren't aware that it's just the littlest thing because so many times I've heard about oh it's just one noodle or it's just a little it doesn't matter it is you wouldn't give a peanut to somebody who has a peanut allergy and um, so it, it the it cross, drives, yes the it cross can me, go ahead sorry it just it drives me insane that people are that restaurants put gluten free on their menu because what they're doing is they're just trying to bring in customers and they're trying to bump up their business and they're not being responsible at all and you know you have people coming in especially who you know the first six months to a year it is is terrible it's so hard because you're trying to figure out so many things and there's so many things that you can't eat what can you eat and walking into a restaurant and trusting that somebody's making your food properly and then by the end of the meal you're throwing up in the bathroom well you know hopefully that's not a first date because you're probably not going to eat a second one <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. But yeah. okay, so there were a couple things, and uh, this next question I think will help um, get even more information um, that you're talking about now. Is that you know you get so excited when there's a G-free menu. Um, a lot of the big chains give you that menu. In fact, we were just at a restaurant the other day and um, they gave me a menu right away. So then it's all like, ooh, they're gluten-free. This is so cool. I don't have to worry about a thing because I got my menu and they're gonna give me something cool that's gluten-free and safe. So that's probably not always the case like you're just saying. And what do we need to tell the server that gives us this menu that says, we're gluten-free now? Uh, should we have like a like Taylor of um, uh, Taylor, who's been on my show a few times, he has a card now that we can hand to the server. But if the server doesn't even know what gluten-free is, how do we how is that scenario going now in the restaurant business? 
Um, you know, it, it's it's a touchy subject um, because you know I've been ordering gluten free for a long time, and you know even even so, it it really doesn't matter sometimes that you even talk to the waiter because it goes in one ear, not the other. I ordered a Caesar salad once without croutons, obviously dressing on the side was very nice about explaining my medical problem and to please be careful and he brought out my salad with croutons on it and and I looked at him and he brought it back in the kitchen and I know that he literally just picked out the croutons <sighs> and then brought the salad back out so I could see the crumbs in the salad and at that point we just got up and left but you what I always say is always, always, always read labels. If you can't read labels, ask questions. If you don't get the answers to the questions that you want, then don't eat it. And you have to be, you know, like my my biggest examples are like diners, for instance. You know, because just because something, the actual food is gluten free, cross contamination is huge. And you know, I I get emails all the time asking. Why am I still getting sick? Why am I still getting sick? Well, let's say you go to breakfast at a diner and yeah, sure your eggs and bacon are gluten free, but maybe right before they made that, they made a bunch of a uh, bunch of pancakes right there. And then they put your put your egg and bacon right over it and then they picked it up, used the same, you know, spatula and then they put that on your plate. Well, now you've been completely cross contaminated. You're going to get your food and you may not have a huge attack if you were to actually eat wheat, but you're still going to have a attack and you're still going to get sick. And I don't think people realize that that these are that just because the food is gluten free, that the area isn't gluten free. And that's what you have to very that's what you have to really be careful about. Well, when you say those little crumbs too, because uh, if I'm not careful about like peanut butter jars and things like that, and there's little crumbs in the butter or whatever, uh, my stomach starts bloating out. So if you're in a date, a first date, and you have crumbs, yes, yeah, so. so it's kind of like ah. So that happened to you. Yeah, we, um, I, okay, <laughs> I can't believe I'm telling you this, but um, yeah, it, this was a, a few years, or actually probably about four months after I got diagnosed. And um, I was going out on a first date and he brought me to this restaurant here in LA that, um, the Buddha's Belly, that had their own gluten-free menu. And he was so excited and I was so excited. I got to the restaurant and I saw like literally almost their menu was was gluten free as well on my menu. And the waitress talked to me, the chef even came out to talk to me. And within and I ordered, you know, egg rolls and all these things that I hadn't eaten. I was so excited and literally by the end of the hour, I couldn't even keep my eyes open. I was I it was like you roofied me. And by the time we walked to his truck, I couldn't, I was like, I was almost passed out. I had a migraine and I could not even keep my eyes open. I was completely almost passed out. And um, I had to sleep at this person's house that I didn't know for three hours because I was (laughs) knocked out. That's a scary thing. That is Um, horrible. and, And like I said, so I even had, I mean, I talked to the chef. And that's why it's so scary and you're rolling the dice. Now though, People are really more aware and more educated, and um, all you really want is somebody to be honest with you. Just be honest. If I really can't eat anything off your menu, then tell me that I can only eat a salad with the dressing on the side or with vinegar oil. Yes, and that's fine. Sometimes you're just going for company, or the first date you're probably and and uh, the alcohol part isn't um, until later. But uh, in next uh, question, I want to ask you about you know alcohol. There's a lot of alcohol that's got gluten in. In fact, let's talk about that now. We'll just do the next. You know, we'll go out of whack here. But the Um, alcohol. I've been gluten by tequila that's been the cheap stuff because a lot of bars don't have the high end or do you have to ask for the high end? How how does that happen with um, gluten free? Because nobody knows what the gluten free, if you ask in a bar, they're not going to know what gluten free alcohol is. You have to do the research. So yeah. what can you tell me about that? 
it's really about you do educating yourself. I mean, be, before you 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 can't ever um, assume that anybody else knows about it. You have to do all your research. This is your this is your affliction. This is what you are dealing with, and you have to make people understand that. And so, you yourself have to be able to go out and do the research, see what you can eat, see what you can, see what causes this, and and so then you um, are can better explain everything. So, um, so your your biggest advice, by the way, would be to research the, I mean, I do this too, but sometimes you don't, you know, it's like uh, we're on the road and we're stopping at a spot, but your suggestion is that you would probably do some research if you want to order a drink. Tell us um, some of the stuff you've done in the past. Well, you know, being a bartender and a mixologist and a bar manager for so long and you know, I love drinking. I love cocktails and I love making specialty cocktails. And so, you know, when I first got diagnosed, the first thing I did was I decided to do an experiment on myself and see if alcohol actually affected me because, you know, there aren't very many articles out there or research been done has been done to say, oh yes, this will cause it or this won't cause it. And and then there's 50-50 on, well, the gluten has been distilled out of it. The gluten hasn't been distilled out of it. And so um, for two years, I drank pretty much everything. I never drink well alcohol. I don't suggest it, so never get a well alcohol. Um, but I drank bourbon, and I drank tequila, and I drank vodka and wine. Oh, you know, actually, I couldn't drink wine for, for, for the first two years for some reason. The sulfites hmm. yeah. really got me sick. Um, and then about four months ago, I decided to give up everything that had wheat in it uh, and just go strictly gluten-free alcohol to see how I felt. And, you know, ironically enough, when I'd wait, even if I, I could have just two drinks, and if I'd have two of the wheat drinks compared to two of, let's say, Chopin potato vodka and wake up the next day, I would feel loads different. I mean, I wouldn't be as tired, I wouldn't have any kind of hangover, I wouldn't have any kind of um, headache or anything like that. I would, I would actually feel normal and fine. Do, do the bars carry like the potato um, vodka oh, yeah. and the higher end? I mean, of, of course, right? Most bars do the higher end of tequila because I, I think um, you well, have with, to almost with request tequila, which it. Because generally speaking, like with vodka, you know, I stick to Chopin, which is made out of potatoes. Yes. And I um, have that too. Um, yeah, and Ciroc, which is yeah. grapes. Those are my two. And then you have Tito's, which is made of corn, but I kind of stay away from the corn. Um, just, you know, plus it's genetically modified, but we won't go into yeah. that. We, um, you know, you have to come back for that episode. <laughs> and then um, we have. Uh, and then tequila, but when you order tequila, what you want to make sure is that it's 100% agave. Because, oh, that's a good tip. Um, I didn't know yeah. that. Because generally speaking, if uh, with well alcohol or like Cuervo or cheaper vodka uh, or cheaper tequila, what's going to happen is that they um, fill it with grains, fill it with wheat or fill it with whatever it is they fill it with. They don't really have to tell you, so you don't know. And so, like, maybe 30 or 40% is agave, and then the rest is just garbage. So, when you are ordering tequila, because I that's probably one of my favorite cocktails, um, you want to make sure that you're drinking 100% agave. Thank you for that tip. I didn't know that. And so, what's your favorite tequila drink, then? Oh, uh, well, I make the best margaritas around. Do you? Okay. Yeah. We need to, when I go into LA and anybody that's in the LA area, you need to talk to Kirsten on um, cr cr yeah, Kirsten, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, on Twitter and, or DM her, email her or something because and it, her email's right there. You need to go to a restaurant. I want to go. Uh -uh. What a safe place. And and it's all just you know. And I use all natural ingredients. Like I don't I don't like using mixers or anything like that. I like using natural fruit, um, oranges, lemons, limes, blueberries, strawberries. Mm, that sounds um, good right now. It's kind yeah, of hot here. And, and oh, oh, tell me about it. It's <laughs> here. Um, but 
but uh, yeah, and 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 then that way you're not you're you're also um, don't have to worry about what's in it because everything is natural for the most part. That's good um, to know. But you know, and, and like rum is fine because rum is made, you know, pretty much just straight sugar cane. Um, generally, for the most part, wine is okay. Uh, I'm not a big gin drinker, so I can't comment on that. Uh, vodka, I'd stick with the the non grain vodkas um, and and stick with Chopin, um, Ciroc, Tito's. Um, what is the most requested drink th- as a bartender? What do you usually get? I mean, is there a mix or is there like a number one drink that everybody just loves? Uh, I'm curious. Not really, to be honest. Um, it's pretty much across the board. I mean, I have a I have a drink that I invented. Ooh, well, let's hear. Long- <laughs> well, it's actually a bourbon drink, and so that's when I was drinking bourbon. Um, but it was bullet bourbon with um, uh, Saint Germain liqueur, Ooh, uh, I like that. squeeze a lemon, and a splash of prosecco, and then you mix it all. Never shake it, just <laughs> mix it, and then pour it over fresh ice, and it's super tasty. It's all alcohol, so. <laughs> but, you know, the the whole point Powerful. of my drink, I know, and that's the, you know, to mix something perfectly that you, even though it is all alcohol, that it doesn't taste like that. And, and so you don't shake it in the, the martini shaker, you just stir it. Yeah, because what happens is then uh, it waters it down. And so it, it changes, it changes um, the taste of the cocktail. And I level my drinks. That's why I never give, I don't like to give straws with my cocktails because it tastes different from when you drink it bottom to top than top to bottom. You're going to have to come on the show and do drinks with me and show us how some drinks are done. I would like that. Okay, so getting back, I I have one more question. Um, So with Disney, uh, when we went back um, in March, they have like a protocol and they talk to... In fact, they have tests on the chefs to the servers. It's the best protocol I've ever seen. And I felt so safe. I never got glutened. So what kind of protocol do restaurants and bars have for um, like gluten free? Are there any? No, there's there isn't any. And and that's the whole thing is, you know, we, we need to make we need to make it's up to us to make restaurants liable. If we're going in your restaurant and you're making us sick, then then that's no different from somebody walking into your restaurant and getting salmonella. It's the same exact. You have to be responsible for the food you feed people. And if you put gluten-free on your menu and you say that this is gluten-free, then that needs to be gluten-free and it needs to be celiac safe because there's no reason to put gluten-free on your menu other than bringing customers in unless you're actually being very very serious and responsible about cross contamination because that's that's where it counts. Yes. And and it's up to us to to fight back to these restaurants and say no, this is not okay. You're not allowed to do this. And and you know like what was it like a month ago where th- with the whole um, Disney show and that was making fun of the oh, Disney character. Yeah. That happened on Friday when the initial tweet and Facebook came out and it went around so fast and so many people jumped on that bandwagon to get the word out that by Monday they pulled the episode. If Disney is going to pull an episode in two days because we got the word out, what is one restaurant at a time going to do if a thousand people come, you know, post and tweet and say things about their restaurant about it not being gluten free and you can't do this and you have to be responsible. Change starts one person at a time, one restaurant at a time and then it's a domino effect and then it just keeps going and going and going and going and we as a community need to stick together and we have to say no this is not okay because I don't want to go the rest of my life going out to eat and being afraid to eat on a date too and yeah have, and, you know and, not and feel well afterwards that's kind of scary yeah and, and sometimes you don't know if you're getting sick or your stomach is bothering you because you're so stressed out about eating or if because you're actually getting gluten and I agree. and I don't I don't want to be scared for the rest of my life and so 
restaurants, there's no need for them to put gluten free on the menu unless they're responsible. And 99% of them aren't responsible. That's and such good information there too. And I could see you on um, with a sign if there's a restaurant. Watch out, restaurants! Oh no. She's out there, uh, and you'll be but, on the news. And and it's and you know just one little last thing as an example, like here in our restaurant, um, like my other, it's I ha- I manage the two same restaurants, but the one in Calabasas is actually. I've schooled that chef for the last year, so we're very gluten-free there and knowledgeable. Here in our main restaurant, not so much. And um, it's little things like um, our marinara sauce is completely gluten-free, but it doesn't have a lid, and it's it's actually in the kitchen. So let's say one of the guys, you know, grabs a piece of veal and he's flipping With it, it breaded or whatever. Yeah. Yes, and he's putting it, flipping it back and forth in the flour. Well, that flour is sitting right next to that marinara sauce. And flour stays in the air up to 24 hours. So in a restaurant, it's there pretty much all the time. But all those little pieces and particles of flour are going right into that marinara sauce. And people don't realize it. And that's going to make you sick. It's it's going to, you know, give you a stomach ache or a headache. Or it's going to affect you minimally, probably. Um... But it's going to But be aware that these yeah. things are happening in the kitchen. And at the when I went to Disney um, a couple months ago, they have dedicated spots oh, in yeah. the no, kitchen. Disney, I wonder Disney who else actually, has that. Disney is actually amazing. They're, um, they're the number one spot for, for family fun uh, when you're dealing with allergens. it's it's Because you don't want your visit ruined. And so in the restaurants... Your tips have been very good, except now it's like, should we eat out? <laughs> should we just have a picnic? Um, but actually, I don't want to cook all my, you know, every night. I want to go right. out and enjoy. So, to be our own advocate, it sounds like be, you know, research, know what restaurant you're going to, be wary of the gluten-free um, menus because it might just be all fun and happy. But in the back, yeah. in the kitchen. It's well, cross. that's where you have to worry about it. You have to worry about in in the kitchen and cross because cross contamination is huge. And no matter what the menu says, no, sometimes no matter what the people say, like you're really taking a chance. And and you know, people get shy about asking questions, or they get embarrassed about asking questions. Or yeah, don't um, do that because I used to be that way. It's yeah, not don't, worth it. it. It doesn't matter who who is ever with you. If if they don't like it, then then it's really not worth it. Yes, I and, agree. And it, it's a pain in the ass. It's a pain in the ass to have to tell somebody this over and over again, knowing that they're rolling their eyes. Like, you could feel them roll their eyes as you're saying this. <laughs> and and it's, it's frustrating and annoying. Well, because, because also the whole thing about gluten-free diets is another thing. And you're going to have to be on because it's the time's up. But oh, um, <laughs> you have to be on again, and we'll just go over some of these things. We'll see you in a, you in a couple of months and see if anything's changed since then. Um, do you want to say what the Calabasas uh, restaurant is? So, if any, I mean, we've got people in the near vicinity there. Um, it's called Guido's. It's on Mahalin across from Sagebrush. Um, Will they see you there? Yeah, I'm there only on Fridays. Okay. Um, but it's actually one of my favorite restaurants here in LA. It, the food is spectacular. I mean, it's it, there's not even a lot of wheat that we use in most of our food there. It's nice um, to hear. And everything is just fresh and really, really good. And it's, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm actually pretty proud of, of our chef and our staff uh, and our menu. There. Nice to hear. And I hope you get out there and uh, advocate this some more because it sounds like we need a lot more work in the restaurants all right so tell everybody where we can find you online it's on the bottom too in a minute uh well uh you can find me at glutenfreegal.com i love that name too thank you uh on facebook i'm glutenfree guide to life and then uh, i'm at at uh on twitter i'm at kirsten uh underscore underscore berman okay follow her Let's get uh, let's get working on those restaurants. Kirsten, thank you so much. You're welcome uh, for being my guest tonight. I've wanted oh, you on God. for a while. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So um, that was 
that was a gluten-free gal she is so passionate so go to her restaurant uh, we'll have a recording of this video tomorrow so everybody that missed it tonight please recommend this this is a big deal uh, this should not happen in restaurants we should all be safe uh, so next week um, I have this wonderful guest I love zing bars and if you haven't tried a zing bar you need to go buy one right now uh, zing bars are really healthy and they're um, pretty cheap and not a lot of calories, not a lot of sugar. They're non-GMO. The CEO will be my guest. And let me get his name. Hold on. All my notes. Uh, David Ingalls. And they are in Seattle. So he'll be my guest next week on July 8th. Um, you can find me at gfreeandhappy.com. And uh, until next week, have a safe and happy G-Free 4th of July.